Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to conduct an experiment on measurement of gain and directivity of antennas, which is seventh experiment in your communication laboratory. Contents: antennas, antenna parameters, polar plot, and then demonstration. So basically, first uh, we have to learn the theory behind this experiment. then we can move on to the demonstration and also uh, some of the measurements which we are going to do in the practical setup so what is an antenna antenna is a conductor and it is a transducer which acts as a facilitator for wireless communication you can consider an example where there is a fm radio station there is a fm radio station which will have a large antenna which will broadcast the signals and you will be having a radio set which will receive these signals correct so here this radio set will also have an antenna which is called as receiver antenna whereas the fm station is having a antenna called as transmitter antenna so first it is acting as a facilitator for the wireless communication physically it is a conductor logically it is a transducer what it transduces it transduces electrical signals to electromagnetic waves or converts electrical signal to electromagnetic waves at the transmitter end at the receiver end electromagnetic waves to electrical waves or electrical signal so an antenna radiates em waves and or or collects them so as a transmitter it radiates the electromagnetic waves as a receiver it collects them sometimes same antenna can act as a transmitter as well as receiver so it can radiate as well as it can collect the signals okay so at the transmitter end the radio transmitter supplies an oscillating radio frequency electric current to the antenna's terminals and the antenna radiates the energy from the current as electromagnetic wave so as indicated at the transmitter end electrical signal is converted into em wave and it is radiated into the space at the receiver end antenna collects incoming electromagnetic waves and convert them into an electrical signal so how this radiation mechanism works it basically works on the flow of current the same has been explained here when electric charges undergo either acceleration or deceleration electromagnetic radiation will be produced hence it is the motion of charges that is nothing but current is the source of radiation okay so elaborate discussion on this might have been uh, done in the mwa course correct so we will not go into uh, in depth details of this so only thing is uh, when electrical charges undergo acceleration or deceleration radiations or electromagnetic radiations will be produced which will propagate through the space another point to note over here is the electromagnetic waves travel with the speed of light that is c is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second this is the speed of em waves as well that means these em waves travel any place on earth within no time so within no time it can reach out any corner of the earth 
the next concept we need to know while discussing antennas is radiation pattern so what is an radiation pattern an antenna radiation pattern is defined as a graphical representation of the radiation properties of the antennas as a function of space coordinates so it is clearly defined over here it is the graphical representation of radiation properties of antennas as a function of space coordinates so xyz coordinates you can consider using these coordinates we graphically represent radiation properties of the antenna so uh, this figure shows the radiation pattern of an antenna as it's been already explained is the graphical representation of the radiated power or received power so the main direction or the direction in which maximum power is transmitted or received will constitute an area called as main lobe so with this angle the power is been radiated or received and which is maximum in this direction okay and it is known as main lobe likewise we have side lobes which lies beside the main lobe and back lobes which are exactly opposite to the main lobe and the power you can see side lobe and back lobe powers or power levels are very low as compared to the main lobe power and the and the maximum power of the main lobe is denoted as zero decibels so this is our reference and at the half power point that is minus 3 db if we draw a line and join the origin points to this line that is intersection of the line then we will be able to measure the half power beam width so this is 0 decibels whereas this is minus 3 decibels if we draw the intersection lines already they have been drawn and the angle if we measure if we measure the angle between these two lines then it is half power beam width for the particular antenna for one plane that is E plane or H plane and the angle between the first nulls is known as full null beam width or first null beam width so nulls means the power radiated or received is minimum or lowest so between these two nulls if you measure the angle it will be full null beam width or first null beam width so using this half power beam width we are going to measure gain and directivity of different antennas so in our experiment also we are going to plot this radiation pattern and using this radiation pattern we are going to find out half hour beam width for the particular antenna either it might be dipole or yagi and then use this parameter for e plane as well as for h plane to calculate gain and directivity of the antenna okay next coming to the important topic that is gain and directivity of antennas so what is directivity directivity is the ratio of power density in a certain direction to the total power radiated so if you consider this diagram the dotted lines this is power density in particular direction whereas power density over entire area if you consider this power this power 
this power as well as this power the dotted lines all you have to consider so the ratio of total power sorry the ratio of maximum power in the particular direction to the total power which is radiated there is a slight radiation in other directions also that we will consider and we will make a total power it might be like maximum power might be say 4 decibels whereas 3.43 decibels might be sorry uh, 4.43 decibels might be your total power so what is this 4.43 decibels it is the power in the side lobes so which will be considered to be a loss kind of loss okay because we want maximum all the power to be rated in a particular direction in some of the applications not always but in some of the applications okay so that is the meaning of directivity in certain direction we want maximum power to be radiated and directivity is defined by the power density in a certain direction divided by the total power radiated which is given by this equation as you can see d is equal to 4 pi this is solid angle multiplied by maximum radiation intensity u max pi power radiated okay now coming to the gain what is gain gain is the ratio of power density in a certain direction to that of total input power to the antenna terminals so gain is power density in a certain direction certain directions divided by total input power total input power okay so you can clearly observe the difference input power is different and radiated power is different why because input power might be one watt radiated power might be only 0.8 watt where is the 0.2 watt it is dissipated or lost in the process of the signal conversion and this gain is defined by another equation which is this one gain is equal to antenna efficiency into directivity so uh, this antenna efficiency is the indicator to represent how much of electrical energy gets converted into electromagnetic energy this is a kind of energy conversion ratio so what it indicates it indicates the efficiency as I have told if you have transmitted 1 watt of power you have fed 1 watt of power if 0.8 watt only getting radiated its efficiency is 0.8 or 80 percent so gain is always lesser than directivity that is what the meaning because efficiency may not be greater than 100 right it should be lesser than 100 you have to multiply a fraction with d so gain will be always less than that directivity that's why you can see gain is less because gain involves the or considers the losses gain considers the losses in the antenna another important term I left without explaining is isotropic pattern what is this isotropic pattern you must be knowing right you can see in every direction equal energy is being radiated an isotropic antenna or an isotropic source can be used to radiate same energy in all the possible directions and you also need to remember 
this isotropic antenna is an ideal antenna or ideal source which is not there in existence okay we can model some of the very important concepts of antennas using this isotropic pattern that's why we use this is a standard with respect to this isotropic source we compare our other antenna and their patterns okay so that's about the gain and directivity the point you need to remember is if antenna has ohmic losses then gain is less than directivity which is the practical case always directivity will be higher because it does not consider the losses whereas gain considers the losses and thereby it is efficiency multiplied by directivity next types of antennas this is also very important we have number of types of antennas which is uh, in terms of the applications in terms of the dimensions in terms of the uh, distance uh, which the signal has to be traveled in terms of the reach or the area which has to cover the application in which it can be used whether it is satellite application whether it is for television whether it is for uh, fm radio am radio short waves whether you are going to use it in uh, on a on top of the car or any other vehicle so based on this different types of antennas we can name few of them have been explained here so monopole or whip antenna dipole antenna loop antenna yagi or yagi uda antenna and this is dish antenna this is to just familiarize different antennas okay now we have come to our topic of interest which is microstrip antennas in our lab we are going to find direct to tend gain of microstrip dipole antenna and microstrip yagi uda antenna so yagi uda uh, are the names of the scientists who have designed these antennas so what is dipole antenna this one this is wired dipole or metallic dipole instead of that we are going to use microstrip so i will explain that then this is yagi antenna microstrip version of this yagi is microstrip yagi antenna okay these two antennas we are going to study which where uh, this is a low gain antenna whereas yagi antenna which uh, we have seen on the uh, on top of our uh, homes for television signal reception it is not the only application there are many applications of this yagi antenna because it is a very high gain antenna so these two antennas we are going to examine for gain and directivity that to microstrip so what is microstrip or a patch antenna microstrip patch antenna consists of a radiating patch on one side of a dielectric substrate which is usually fr4 that has a ground plane of cu on the other side as shown in the below figure so you can see in this figure this is ground plane this is substrate whereas this is the microstrip patch okay so patch means it is just a strip or it is fabricated on a pcb board fabricated on pcb board which you can see over here so this is array of four cross four patch antenna which is going to have a frequency resonance of 10.3 gigahertz the same kind of patch antennas are used in your mobile phones also okay so another point to remember is microstrips are used in aircrafts 
spacecrafts satellites missiles cars and mobile phones so range of applications we can expect from these microstrip antennas so as i told the microstrip version of yagi antenna and dipole antenna we are going to use and measure their gain and directivity okay so you can see in the figure the first one is yagi antenna the second one is microstrip dipole antenna before we move to the demo part let me say another important topic which is about polar plot this is the plot which we use to plot the radiation pattern and then determine half power beam width and use it for calculating gain and directivity so well, this is the plot where we can draw our radiation pattern like this for example then uh, if this is our 0 db minus 3 db line like this and then we'll draw the intersection points and then measure this angle and say it is uh, for theta e in the electric field for the magnetic field it will be theta h you can draw on the other side and uh, using these you can calculate the gain and directivity theta e and theta h okay so how to uh, plot this uh, radiation pattern and measurement of half power beam width we'll see in the uh, next video okay so first we'll complete the demo then we'll come back again after uh, demo you will be conducting the experiment and uh, you will be knowing uh, the radiation pattern or the power radiated or received by the antenna for various angles so we can do this once we complete with the experiment correct so let us now move on to the demo part of this experiment in experiment number six we are going to measure the gain and directivity of two micro strip antennas one is yagi uda antenna which uh, which is the one i am holding now and next the dipole antenna okay for these two antennas we are going to measure the directivity and gain okay so the procedure is like this initially uh, these antennas are designed to radiate at frequency 1.25 gigahertz so we will set our frequency in the uh, microstrip antenna trainer as 1250 megahertz that accounts for 1.25 gigahertz okay that's why first we'll set the frequency and then using the probes mm -hmm. we will directly connect the signal from input to output and the connector I am using is SMA connector okay now you can see the power level is indicated as 104.9 dB microvolt it is the transmitted power you can say VT is equal to 104.9 dB microvolt okay now once it is measured it can be used throughout your experiment that is for Yagi antenna as well as for the dipole antenna okay now once you measure this remove the direct connection and now you have to connect the signal to a transmitter antenna okay this is our transmitter it should be inserted like this for e field measurement now at the receiver end also you can see there is another antenna which is of same type that is yagi antenna so both are symmetric you can use this one as transmitter this as receiver or this as transmitter and this as receiver once you firmly fix this now you have to insert into the position of this antenna stand okay this is our receiver because the receiver is the one which is going to vary in its direction and we have kept our antennas by uh, 50 centimeter apart okay approximately because 
6.75 cm is the far field for this antenna which is calculated that's why we will uh, we'll have to keep more than 6.575 cm apart okay for far field region this arrangement is for electric field measurement or the theta e measurement of the beam width now if you want to measure theta h then the arrangement should be like this or using the other bend which is here in this way we have to fix the antenna okay this is for h field measurement or theta h so coming back to the theta e measurement only i will explain you the procedure how to measure theta e for theta e measurement this is the arrangement as explained earlier now this receiver is in the line of sight the transmitter and receiver are in line of sight at this point whatever power we are observing that is 86.7 db microvolt is our vr for this antenna vr is the received voltage level or uh, in microwaves we say power level it is 86.7 db microvolt okay so vt is 103 around 103 db microvolt vr is 86.7 db microvolt now we have to measure the radiation and note down in the tabular column so here first we have kept our antenna at zero position you can see the position over here it is at zero degree the corresponding value for zero degree is the power level is 86.2 db microvolt now in clockwise direction i will rotate by 15 degrees this is the clockwise direction where i have kept my antenna at 15 degree so corresponding reading is 8.85.2 okay around 85.8 it is okay 85.8 now further i will rotate by 15 degree i will take the reading at angle 30 it is around 83.7 similarly i have to rotate it to 45 degree and corresponding power level will have to take it as a reading and then 60 then 75 you can observe the change in power level or the radiation received by the antenna and then finally up to Uh, 90 okay so at 90 you are getting around 65 db microvolt that is the maximum radiation you are getting so this is for positive angles the clockwise rotation of this receiver whatever the value we have got we have to write it for positive angles positive power okay that is just an indication now same thing is repeated for anti clockwise direction that is zero 15 30 then 45 60 75 and 90 okay in that way you have to take down the readings from 0 to 90 degree in clockwise and 0 to 90 degree in anti clockwise and corresponding power values you have to write down in the tabular column for theta e this is for theta e now for measuring theta h as said earlier you have to replace the position by this one okay this is for theta h measurement you can see again we will have to take reading from 0 for 0 degree what we are getting the power level as 73.2 similarly let me adjust this similarly you have to rotate in the clockwise direction for 15 degree whatever power level you are getting that you have to write down next 30 next 45 next 
60, 75 and 90. Corresponding power levels you have to write it down. Okay, in this way. And then come back to 0 again and rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. And take down the corresponding readings in the negative angle and negative power columns. Okay, that completes your reading. Once you take the readings, you have to put the polar plot and then you measure theta E and theta H because your half power beam width need to be calculated. Once the half power beam width is calculated, you can calculate directivity and then you can calculate gain. And the experiment is repeated with dipole antennas. Here we are using the Yagi antenna. We have taken the readings. The same experiment can be repeated for dipole antennas by replacing the antennas.